This one productivity hack has made me over $23 million by the age of 25, and I never struggle with time management. I'm going to teach it to you right now on this Google Doc. And the very first principle I want you to know is that you don't have time to build a business because you're not making the time. You have to remember, people don't have time, people make time. And they make time for the things that matter the most to them. You have time for your family every single day at the end of the day, right? If you have kids, do you make sure that you actually have dinner with your kids, that you drop them off at school? Yeah, you absolutely make time for that. And if you were at work right now, okay, at your nine to five job, and all of a sudden you receive a phone call that your wife, your husband, your parent got into a really, really bad car accident and they're at the hospital right now, you would probably drop everything at work regardless of how important your meeting is to go rush to the hospital to see if your family member is okay. Is that right? And so therefore, we have just demonstrated through a few different examples that you will make time for things that are urgent. You will make time for emergencies. And guess what? Even if it's not extreme, don't you watch college football every single weekend? Don't you sleep in every single Saturday morning? Don't you go out every single Friday night and go to the bar, go to the club and do whatever it is that young people do these days or old people? Oh, I just want go to go hang out with friends. Whatever that may be, you're making time for things that matter to you. And so at the end of the day, it's not about having time, it's about making time. And once you understand that, we need to now shift into time mastery, not time management, okay? Time management, the micromanagement of every single minute of your calendar, that doesn't make any sense. We have to master time. And in order for us to understand this, and I'm gonna be teaching here today on the spreadsheet of exactly how to map out your calendar, okay? The first thing that you need to know is that if you wanna ditch the nine to five, listen closely, then you have to sacrifice the five to nine, okay? What I mean by that is, listen, I know you don't want to work your nine to five job anymore. If you're a college student, okay, that basically means you don't want to work a nine to five job when you graduate. If you're working a nine to five job right now and you dread it, you want to quit that, right? If you're a busy mom and you stay at home, well, guess what? Your nine to five, quote unquote, is taking care of your kids. Maybe you want to hire, have more time with family. Maybe you want to retire your, pe your, your husband, right? Your significant other. So if you want to ditch that nine to five, what do you need to do? You got to let go and sacrifice during the five to nine. And that means the 5 a.m. to the 9 a.m. in the morning. And then that also means if you're a night person, that's from 5 p.m. to 9 a.m., 9 p.m. in the evening, right? And the thing is, you don't even need to go that extreme. You can just work two to three hours a day. That's all you need to get started with building a business. And then the question really becomes, are you seriously not willing to put two to three hours a day, let's say 10 to 15 hours a week, to build a business that literally has the opportunity to change you and your family's future forever? I fully subscribed to this belief when I was 18, 19 years old, I was in college, and I knew I was so scared with so, such urgency. I don't know who, who gave this to me. I'm sure it was God that planted the seed in my heart, but I was just so anxious that, man, by the time I graduate at the age of 21, 22, I cannot accept I'm just going to go into some nine to five and just work that for the next 10 years of my life mindlessly without blaming any, without thinking about my future. Right, I knew I, this is my time ticking bomb. I have massive urgency and I have to get something. I have to make it work. I have to make it happen. I had this very, very high sense of urgency, right? And that's why I made the time. So do you have that sense of urgency as well? Do you have a deadline? Do you have something looming at the end of the year? Or even if you don't, artificially make it up. Make up a, a narrative in your mind if I have to get this done by this point or else this thing happens. And make up that narrative so that you can actually have this high sense of urgency, right? Now, once you understand these concepts that you got to sacrifice your 5 your 5 a.m. to, to 9, 9 a.m. or you got to sacrifice your 5 p.m. to 9 p.m., okay? Now, let's go ahead and map out your calendar, okay? So this is what I call the time collapse productivity tracker. It's something that I work with all of our one-on-one -on -one mentees on, okay? And the very first thing that we need to do is we need to just create two to three hours per day to actually work on your business. So you see here that I've color-coded this thing so it looks kind of like Skittles, taste the rainbow, right? <laughs> because all of these colors stand for a different activity. So first and foremost, green. Green is green because green is life, right? Restorative sleep. You have to recover. And your performance starts with you getting good sleep so your brain can function. So for most people, okay, for you, if you need eight hours, nine hours, then obviously just adjust this calendar accordingly and you're going to have your own copy of this. Okay, I'm going to make sure. Um, say to the end of the video, I'm going to make sure you get this. Okay, I'm going to show you how. Um, the green is you got to make sure you get seven hours of sleep. Now, for most people, if you get seven hours of sleep, you're not going to be feeling amazing. Maybe for some of you, you don't need to sleep that much, but it's enough. Okay. So I want you to block on your calendar hour by hour at what time of the day you're actually going to get your sleep in. Then step three. Okay. I want you to block out two hours of deep work 
at either the very beginning of the day, if you're a morning person, before all other activities, or at the end of your day, if you're a night owl. And you'll see here that I have an early bird execution plan. I also have a night owl execution plan. Now, the whole idea here is you know your own internal rhythm. If you're like, I don't know if I'm early bird. Yes, you do. Okay. When you're in middle school and you're in high school, okay, and you're going to school, when you're cramming for the test, did you study the best late at night or did you study really, really well when you're early morning? Okay. Most people instantly know. I'll tell you just statistically, about 70% of people fall in the category of being early bird. I'm an early bird. Most people I know are early birds. And then the 20, 30% remaining, you guys are night owls. And then I also fundamentally believe that even if you're an owl, you can force yourself and change your circadian rhythm to become an early bird. It's just a matter of desire of you, if you're willing to do that or not. By the way, if you want this Google Doc and the spreadsheet where you can map out your schedule, just go to my Instagram right now you see, drop me a follow, and then just message me with one word, doc, D-O-C. Messaging there, I'm going to give you the spreadsheet immediately. Okay. So becoming an early bird, all you need to do is block out, hey, what are the two hours that no matter what, I'm going to focus on building a business. If you're like, well, what do I do during business? Watch the next video because in the next video, I'm actually going to start covering the tactical step-by-step -step of what do you do in the business. But for now, I just want you to first make the time. Block it out. If you block it out, then nothing's going to give me what? Keep that as non-negotiable. So for me, you can see here, this is actually my personal schedule of what I used to do. I would wake up at 5 a.m., some days even earlier. Your morning routine should, by the, by the way, not be longer than one hour. Realistically, only 30 minutes, but one hour is more than enough. So for me, it's wake up, go to the bathroom, make a coffee. I'll read the Bible. I'll do my prayer in the morning. I have a conversation with God. I do that every single day. That takes about 30, 40 minutes, right? So I'm sitting down at my computer ready to work at like 5.45 in the morning, okay? But let's just say from 6 a.m. and 7 a.m., from 6 to 8, that is going to be the time that I work on my business, okay? And then for the purpose of, let's say your nine to five job, let's say 8 a.m., you eat breakfast, you pack up, you leave for work, okay? And then that's basically where you go ahead and start working uh, on your business, right? Excuse me, working at your nine to five job. And then from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., okay? This here is basically your nine to five job. So I get it. If you can't work on your business, then fine, no problem. Then just go ahead and work on your nine to five job, right? And then finally at 6 p.m., you probably are going to be wrapping up, winding down at 5 p.m. You start yeah, I recommend you need to get one hour of exercise. If even not one hour, 30 minutes of exercise. So you're going to drive to the gym. You're going to go ahead and you're going to train for one hour. And what I recommend, by the way, NET, N-E-T, that stands for no extra time. So when you're at the gym, stop listening to music. You need to be motivated at the gym just to listen to music in order to work out. No, use that for learning. So by the way, if you don't have time even to go through this this course series, then what, you sh what should you do? You should watch these videos on 1.5x speed or 2x speed, if that's uh, if you can go that quick, and just study this stuff while you're working at the gym. It's the greatest hack, by the way. I listen to everything on 2x speed and I do so when I'm working out. Okay? You work out for one hour and then you come back home, 7 p.m., relax with family. Who said you can't have family time? Who said you can't relax? Of course, eat dinner with your family. Eat dinner with your friends. Watch TV. Watch that favorite episode on Netflix for one hour, 1.5 hours, right? If you're doing three hours every single night, you're doing something wrong. Okay? But yeah, enjoy that one, two hours. And then finally, at 8 p.m., okay, and this is specifically relevant to my mentees, but do you have an online community of people that are holding you accountable? Do you have a mastermind community of people that are pushing you to become better, 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 right? For the people who are in my mentorship, what they do is because we have such a high performance community of people, they're inside of the community, they're catching up with each other. Sometimes they jump on Zoom calls, they mastermind, right? They interact, they answer each other's questions, support each other. But for you, if you don't have that, then find it, right? And spend, I would say, minimum, minimum 20 to 30 minutes a day and actually change your environment. Remember, your environment is not just your physical surroundings. We live in an online world now. I run a company with 40 plus employees and all of my employees live in different cities across the world in over 10 different countries, right? So the whole concept here is you should be working. Um, you should be surrounding yourself in an environment and getting exposure to that environment every single day for at least 20, 30 minutes. And then finally, you can see here, 9 p.m., wind down, electronics off, shower, read a book, 10 p.m., lights out, go to bed. You see how simple the schedule is? In the schedule here, you'll see all I'm doing on a daily basis is ensuring I get two hours of work. I block that out. I make sure that I, uh, you'll see here, post and engage is going to be relevant to the business. Okay. So you see that in the next video, but here in step five community, you want to make sure that you have at least a 30 minute window where you spend time within a mastermind community. And then you also want to make sure that you have a wind down period. And that wind down period is going to be for you to actually just be free of electronics, read a book, be present with your family, get ready to go to bed, right? And the one thing that um, is also extremely important is you need to keep your physiology in check. So you want to make sure you get one hour of exercise in. Now, this schedule that I just mapped out for you here, 
is exactly what you would do if you were a morning person. And for 70% of you, this is what you should be doing. Now, if you're a night owl, no problem at all. Okay. I never want to hear the excuse. Ah, Richard, I, I, I'm not a morning person. Well, guess what? Then do it at nighttime. You see here, I blocked out 10 p.m. and 9 p.m. here. And again, you can shift around and play with this. You can shift everything back two hours, shift everything earlier one hour. It doesn't matter. So play around with it. Okay. Again, in this template here, I've given you your own uh, opportunity to go ahead and do so here. Okay. And so what you need to do is if you're night owl, but you still work a nine to five job, I recommend that you always wake up at least two hours from the start of work because it's just not a good look if you wake up 30 minutes before, you take a shower, your hair's still wet, you show up at work. Even if you work remotely at home, right, at your nine to five job, it's just like, it's just such a bad look, right? So let's say you wake up at 7 a.m., you do the morning routine, and it's the same thing. Except rather than doing the work in the morning, you eat breakfast, you leave for work at 9 a.m., you start your work. And from nine to five, it's your job, right? So it's the same thing. You work your nine to five job, and then at 5 p.m., you go to the gym, same thing. 6 p.m., train at the gym. Okay, and by the way, that training, you could also shift to the early morning. If you like working out in the morning, you need higher energy in the morning, then you do in the morning. Okay, for me personally, I like training in the evening. It's just like a nice break that signifies, hey, my work day at my nine to five job is done. I can work out, relax my mind. And the rest of the day, I can do whatever I want to do, right? So you go train at the gym. And then you can see here, 7 p.m., dinner, relax with family, watch Netflix if you want to do it. By the way, that's like, if you don't want to watch Netflix, don't feel obligated to do so. This is like, this can be as short as 15, 20 minutes if you just want to eat and just get straight to work, right? And that's what I did when I was in college. I didn't, I didn't need to, oh, I got to eat with my roommates and hang out with people every single day. No, once a week, twice a week, it's totally fine, right? And then 8 p.m., 9 p.m., that's where you can work on your business. You see here, at 10 p.m., interact, spend some time in the community. And then at 11 p.m. or midnight, whenever you want to go to bed, wind down, lights out, and at midnight, right, as you can see right here, sleep. And you're going to get seven hours of sleep from midnight down to 7 a.m. So you can see in both of these schedules here, right, both of these schedules, we've done a couple of things. Number one, you sleep for seven hours no matter what. Number two, you have a two-hour block. Number three, you're spending one hour every single day, or not even if you don't want to, but you should be spending at least 36 minutes inside of some kind of mastermind high-performance online community so you can get surrounded with those kinds of people, keep you elevated, your mindset elevated. And then of course you have a wind down period where you can actually enjoy, spend time. And then um, one thing again, didn't mention is you should have the gym in there. So the gym's also going to be in there. Okay. If you do these things, you have the time, model mind, like no matter what, you're going to have the time to work out. And so really just remember, ditch the nine to five. Oh, guess what? You want to quit that nine to five job? Then show me that you want it that badly. What are you doing from 5 a.m. to 9 p.m.? What are you doing from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m.? You see what I mean? What do you do in the morning and the evenings? Because that's what you have to sacrifice. And it doesn't have to be for years. But for the next three months, if you sacrifice for the next six months, or maybe even the next year, if you did those, and then you actually were able to quit your nine to five job because you got your business to five to $10,000, maybe $20,000 a month, would it be worth it? I think unequivocally, everyone right now watching this, we would say, yes, 100%. That's the bet that I've made. That's what hundreds of my mentees have done. And that's exactly the sacrifice and the trade that you should make as well. Now you know how to master your time. Let's talk about money. I want you to go watch this next video here where I'm going to show you step-by-step step exactly how I'd go from zero to over 10K per month with a digital arbitrage business. Step-by-step, step. I'll see you there.